Hello. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> sure. Getting your steps in? Awesome. Well, I've got half of SIG networking here and one of my founders, so I'm going to fail miserably. Looking forward to that. My name is James Strong. I'm a staff solutions architect with ChainGuard, and we're going to talk about what's happening with Ingress Nginx. <laughs> Just present myself. I'm Ricardo. I work at VMware, but I don't do Ingress Nginx at VMware. I do on my my uh, yes, weekends. Spare time. Your yeah. weekends. Yeah, yeah. Sunday. So if you need a PR, um, ping him on Sundays. It's true. <laughs> Works for me. I do a lot of stuff with networking and Kubernetes uh, and things like that. Uh, also, securing container images. Come check out the Changar booth. We'll talk about CVE reduction and we have a raffle. I was required to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have already presented myself. I am also the creator of QPUG. I don't know if. Does someone use Kubepug, like the plugin for deprecation? Great. Antonio uses, so you already got the sticker. No one's going to get the sticker, just Antonio. Yeah. So our agenda for today, um, we're going to talk about the CVE review that we've had. So we've had some fun news lately. If uh, you all are uh, using Ingress Nginx, you probably know about this, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that those particular ones. We're going to talk about our year-end review, so some of the stuff that we've done this year, some of the things that were awesome, some of the things that probably upset some of you, and we're going to talk about our 2024 plans and a community discussion. But real quick, one of the things that I want to talk to you all about is one of the things first and foremost is that we're all volunteers. And it's very difficult sometimes to see issues, to keep track of all of the issues. I know right now, I think I have, last time I checked, I have 417 issues. And um, yeah, it's very difficult to keep track of all of this between the three maintainers that we have. So one of the best things to get our attention is to join the community meetings. Who's joined the community meeting for Ingress Nginx? Thank you. <laughs> one person. Um, but really, honestly, it, it's very difficult for us to keep track of all of them. And if, you, if there is an issue or if there is a bug, there's something that's wrong that you want to bring to our attention, please bring it to the community meeting. And we've got all of that linked later in the presentation. Slack is also a good place to reach us. Like, uh, I'm not sure if you, everyone knows we have like Kubernetes Slack. There is a channel for Ingress users uh, where you, you can make questions and, and have support. And if you actually are willing to get some new features or discuss some bug fix or something that's, that really engages the maintainers, we have a, develop, a development channel as well. So usually it's uh, kind of faster. Yeah. yeah, Slack's a good entry point and then the community meeting as well. So who all seen these CVEs? Yeah, did you read all of the final articles? Don't, don't read articles about your software especially when you've released CVEs. Um, so we've had a lot of fun working with SIG Security on fixing these for the last year. So a lot of things that we've rolled out this past year have been to help fix these CVEs that have been coming. So a couple of the things did break folks, but we want you all to be aware that behind the scenes, there are things that we are working on. So when we release things that look like they're breaking changes, they're also to help security issues. Ingress Nginx and Ingress in general is a highly, um, highly privileged um, controller. It needs access to SSL certificates and it has the entry point to the cluster. So we have to do as much as we can to secure uh, Ingress. Lots of things are insecure by default. There's lots of things that you have to tweak with Kubernetes and with Ingress to make it a little bit more secure. And that's what we've been doing this past year. So a lot of the things that we've done, and I'll let Ricardo talk a little bit more about some of the security updates that we did to fix some of these CVEs. Yeah, so uh, who is here just for the CVEs, actually? You can, I, I, I would be like just to yell at the maintainers like. So we got two. <laughs> that's that's nice. Thanks. So, uh, if, if you ever got access to the to the Ingress Nginx controller, like did a kubectl exec and, and got into the controller, you're gonna see that um, a lot of things that you do on Ingress objects and the other things they we end up on the Nginx configuration file, right? So, uh, we have a bunch of uh, Lua code and a bunch of uh, uh, temp templating, 
But some of those things are going to enter and they're going to be on the Nginx configuration file, which is actually uh, a daemon running that can execute code on your, uh, on, you know, on, on that container, right? And because we use Lua, you can also uh, write scripts that will, will be executed. So first of all, when you trust your users to create a, an ingress object on your, on your Kubernetes cluster, you are expecting them actually to try things that they shouldn't be trying, right? So uh, uh, trying to inject code, trying to uh, extract some information, or uh, at least like you trust them and know that if they do that, they are going to do probably for some good reason, right? When you allow users to run untrusted code unchecked, you're going to have security issues. Yeah. <laughs> so. We, we've been trying actually, so, so the way that today uh, Ingress Controller is structured, and we promised that last time on Detroit, and I'm going to renew that promise, <laughs> sorry folks, uh, it's that uh, because of that configuration file, what happens, it, it's, uh, you run everything together, right? So you have the same container running that reconciliation, going to the Kubernetes API, getting the certificates and so on, that's the same one that's exposed to your internet. And this is kind of dangerous. This is kind of bad, right? Because uh, someone can just create something, some, some ingress object that will end up being a Nginx configuration file that can end up being like someone from externally getting all of the secrets of your cluster, right? So the thing is that uh, we've been trying to isolate that problem, those problems. Eliminating them, it's too hard today because we support a lot of annotations, as you may know. We've been trying to deprecate some, as you may know as well and uh, some, some things that are old, some things that are not used. And we've been trying to close and make sure that like when the admin allows the user to really add uh, uh, Nginx configuration files using snippets, they know what they are doing, right? So you are allowing your user to create configuration files, to write Nginx configuration files. Do you want to do that? You are allowing your user to, uh, uh, to, to add random rejects on the annotations because you want to allow them to have a, a random URLs. Do you want to do that? So, but because it always works this way, we cannot just go and say, okay, this doesn't work this way anymore because you folks are going to yell at us and say, hey, you broke my production cluster with everything that was working and I always trusted my users and now I am like not trusting them anymore because I'm worried. So that's what we've been trying to do in a way that like, hey, we are just trying to make it a bit more safe. And if you want to run the risk of allowing your users to put configuration files, go for it, but that's up to you. I think what Rob's going to tell us is just to use uh, Gateway API. Yep. <laughs> 2026. That's the promise. <laughs> One of the other big questions that we get a lot is, why are you all running an old version of Nginx? I think I've closed about six issues that I've asked this. I get a lot of questions in Slack about this. So one of the things that we do, you see the list here. Um, Ricardo said Lua, I'm gonna say Lua. Um, we use a lot of Lua plugins and a lot of Lua code. And because of that, we're using OpenRusty. OpenRusty, when it supports the version of Nginx, we can support that version of Nginx. Because the last time we did this, it generated a lot of core dumps and it caused a lot of issues. We are going to work on an experimental build. There's some of the things we're going to talk about in our 2024 plan. But because of that, right, I wanted to be on record. This is why we don't support the latest version of Nginx. And uh, just for the record, like, we use all of those Lua stuff because we need to allow you to hot reload uh, the backends, right? So that's uh, why we do have all of this Lua stuff there. And uh, now that we have some plans to remove that and maybe reduce the, the size of the image and then say, okay, folks, we, we can evolve now with the right version. So 2023 review, uh, about about 501 PRs. That's a lot of PRs. I didn't get a chance to remove the pen pot from that, but that's a lot of PRs to manage and approve and work through between three people. Uh, now four, we have a couple friends from SIG Release helping us. Thank you, Carlos and Adolfo. <laughs> uh, we've had about 10 releases. We're on a pretty good cadence, about one a month um, because of curl. Thank you, curl. Um, we have to update curl. We have to update all of the underlying OS dependencies. Um, we are working on V10. There are going to be some changes in V10. How many of you read the release notes that I so carefully handcraft? 
<laughs> Thank you. Awesome. How many of you know that we also have a Google Dev mailing list where I also put those release notes out there and release information about? No? We have a, we have a Google Dev mailing list. <laughs> Ingress Nginx Dev at Kubernetes.io. Please join that. We put out release notes there as well. We're trying to do as much as we can to let folks know what is happening, what's going on. We have a Slack handle, we have the dev mailing list, and we have the two Slack channels. So let's talk about some of those major changes that we talked about a little bit. I will let R Ricardo talk about those a little bit more. Um, annotation validations. What, an what are annotation validations? Basically, we never validated all of the characters that you added into your annotations. So you could add a random code into that, trying to do escapes, and it would pass. Now, if you have a Boolean annotation, it will enforce that it's a Boolean annotation. It's a server name. It's, it's going to try to enforce that that's like a, a valid FQDN and not like james.whatever.com, quote, drop database, whatever. <laughs> so that's a, yeah. Uh, Path validations. How many of you all use implementation specific? Yeah. It's very uh, specific in its name, implementation specific. It is up to the controller to implement that specifically. So we have to do some validation around that. Um, sorry, that was my uh, alliteration for the day. Go ahead. No, no. So. Uh... <laughs> Who uses exact or prefix almost as always as a path type here, instead of uh, implementation specific on ingress, maybe? Depends. Yeah. yeah, depends. So yeah, so there was a problem when the ingress API, another ingress controller was being created. Uh, I'm looking at you, Rob, because you're doing, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, we as Kubernetes maintainers uh, forgot to add some validations on the API, and then we couldn't add that anymore because the validation because the API turned it into GA. So if we do that, it would break our clusters. And then we realized that, that uh, we allowed things like regexes on the path, and they shouldn't be allowed. And we allowed some other random characters, and they shouldn't be allowed. So instead of adding that on the Kubernetes API, because it would break all of the other implementations as well, we started adding those to Ingress Controller, and it was part of this uh, latest release, and it actually broke a lot of folks that didn't read the, the, uh, the readme. Docs. Yeah, yeah, the release notes, yeah. yeah. All right, and uh, GRIP, we're moving the V2, so I think G1's, V1's been removed, or did I put that in the wrong spot, Ricardo? You're looking at, you're looking at me funny. Yeah, no, no. I'm just trying to remember that one. So much, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things to remember. Let's talk about some of the fun breaking changes that we did. Um, the big one, right, was disabling server snippets. Who got caught by that one? Who didn't really read the release notes? <laughs> Again, we try to make it very obvious about a breaking change. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Simver and how we're, we're going to interpret it from that perspective and what you would expect from us when we make a major minor and patch release. So. You can disagree, you can have philosophical debates, but at the end of the day, we have to maintain some semblance of cadence with releases. Uh, and then, of course, all the CVEs. So anytime there's a Go CVE, there's an Alpine CVE, there's a Lua CVE, there's <laughs> Curl. That's, uh, love Curl. Whew. It's a great tool. Um, anyway, so we also have to put out fixes for all of those things. Release cadence, like I said, currently mo uh, monthly. We are looking to implement nightly builds. So being able to put a new version out every night or at some time, uh, something, some cadence, uh, really around just updating things, making sure that you know, when we do the you know, APK update, we don't have to worry about that. And then making the releases a little bit easier because we have those nightly builds and folks can test against those. And then just always more testing. I think I had a slide for the past three talks where we talk about just all of the things that we have to test um, over 400 end to end. It was just a lot of testing. And there's also been a lot of performance um, testing questions. There's also been a lot of cloud specific questions. So working on trying to deploy Ingress Nginx in those configurations and test those um, because the cloud also adds a lot of other options and tweaks. So this is the thing where most people are either going to disagree or agree. When we talk about major, minor, and patch releases, so I'll start at the bottom because I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me on this one. Patch releases are going to be probably 195. CVEs, 
We do those monthly, uh, depend upon Golang, all of those fun things I just talked about. We go up the stack where people are going to probably start disagreeing, which is fine. Um, you can come be a maintainer with us and you can help change our minds. <laughs> um, Alpine versions, anytime there's a new Alpine version, we'll bump minor, we'll track it. Um, config changes, so this is the one that's going to break, that broke folks, that this is going to be the big sticking point for most people, is that if there is a security change, the cadence now is that we'll put it out there where it won't break, and then another release coming out, we will flip it to the more secure option. We're trying, again, to make ingress secure by default. That's also my tagline for my job, so. Um, new features. Well, as we add new features, um, changes in the Helm chart, things like that, and then anything upstream from the Kubernetes or KK. Um, the V beta one was the big one for us, but that goes into the next category for major changes. So architectural changes, we're gonna talk a lot about um, control plane, data plane split, Ricardo talked about a little bit beforehand, and then breaking backwards compatibility. I don't think anyone's gonna disagree. If we're gonna break something from that perspective, you know, how annotations work, um, removing annotations, things like that. We're going to break backwards compatibility from the API. We'll do major changes. So like the V beta one was the big one. And then the CPDP split, where we're going to talk a little bit more about. What? Yeah, Ga gateway API, API is going to be... Probably going to be one. Well. Yeah. Gateway API is probably... Control plane data plane split is going to enable us to do gateway API. So we'll have a V2 where control plane data plane split. And then most likely... 2024, 2025. <laughs> we'll get on V2 of uh, Gateway API. As soon as my wife allows me to work on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the fun things we're going to do in 2024, I'm going to hand some of these off to Ricardo. You want to talk about the uh, TLS pass-through pass -through problem? Yeah. Who uses TLS pass-through? Cool. Uh, did you know that it's not handled by Nginx, but by Go, the Go controller? and you have really bad performances on that? Yeah. So uh, while we've been doing this split control plane data plane, uh, we have realized that and was like, okay, we need to fix that. And uh, there is a, star, uh, a history on that. Uh, when this was implemented, it was part of the commercial uh, license of Nginx, but now, now it's free, right? So uh, we've been fixing that. There is a PR already ongoing. Uh, it's working-ish. Uh, there are still some things to be fixed, but uh, the idea is actually not only to fix, but to solve some really old issues that I've seen, like people asking for proxy protocol, or people asking uh, for some better uh, performance, or even, I, I guess, uh, uh, allow lists and, and deny lists. Yeah. The big one that I think may cause some companies controversy that rely on some of the Lua pieces is that um, yesterday in the contributor summit asked if anyone was a Lua developer. Do we have any Lua developers in the room? You have one? You're I'm gonna welcome. Have to talk to you. Yep. Someone make sure he doesn't leave. Um, <laughs> we're looking to migrate the Lua functionality to NJS, so that's Nginx JavaScript library. How many of you are JavaScript developers? A lot more than the Lua developers. So that's kind of the idea, is that we want to be able to move to a supported language that we can get more contributors to help out with that. And it is also going to be supported by the Nginx F5 folks. So we're looking to do that next year as we move through a lot of some of these. Like I talked about the experimental Nginx image, we have someone from the community who has tested it. They've done the build, and we're working on getting that integrated. I don't think this is a PR. I think they just did it locally and tested it. But again, it's going to cause core dump issues and things like that. So that's why we're going to say it's experimental, and we're going to put it out with the nightly builds until it is supported by OpenRusty. You want to talk about mod security? Yeah. Uh, someone using mod security? OK, we have some folks. I'm not sure if you know, but uh, mod security was backed by a company, uh, Spider Labs. Uh, they stated that they're not going to keep that anymore in 2020. They released it to the community to be supported. Yeah. As a company, they won't be supporting it. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's true. But uh, for us, uh, if you have ever seen like the compilation of the whole Nginx takes a lot of time. You have a bunch of uh, C bindings and other things. It works on some architectures, some others. Uh, it, it takes some more effort to work. And uh, there is this new project uh, called Coraza uh, from OWASP. Uh, which they have re-implemented almost the majority of uh, mod security uh, parser in Go. 
And the speed, it, uh, that I think they have actually stated that the speed of this parser is it's a bit slower than uh, the C one on what security, but it works. And uh, we've been seeing a bunch of other projects using Coraza uh, as uh, a replacement for mod security. So uh, you have like uh, an envoy binding, uh, HA proxy ingress is using that as well. And we have uh, spoken with them to say like, hey, uh, maybe we can try to do that on Nginx. And uh, they said, yeah, cool. So we have different approaches to do that. But the idea is uh, uh, we thank uh, mod security for their efforts at all. I think it, it was like, uh, since I was like a sysadmin in 2004 or five, has always been like a great uh, uh, project, but uh, Coraza seems like the, uh, the evolution of the architecture for the uh, for, for us on, on Ingress and GenX as well. And then we keep talking about control plane, data plane splits. So like we talked about, some of the security issues is because NGINX and the controller are running in the same pod. We shouldn't be doing that. And we're going to work on splitting that all out. There's a lot of legacy code. There's a lot of legacy paths. I don't know if you've, again, if you've seen our build, we're doing a lot of sim linking, a lot of installs. There's just a lot to work through to break those two pieces apart um, and trying to understand how we're going to do the communication sync because the ingress control is going to generate the Nginx config and then data plane is going to just use it. So hopefully we'll be able to, again, break out the responsibilities and increase the security model. But again, this is also going to help us with the gateway API implementation. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and let you talk about that one again. Or we keep talking about it. We, it, it is definitely on our minds. We're always thinking about it. We always get, again, question, the biggest questions around CVEs, gateway API, and the Nginx versions. Um, don't think we don't hear them. We're also, we're always thinking about them. And then the last one is reducing the container built in third party images. So we don't just maintain the container image for Ingress Nginx. There's lots of other pieces, um, the end-to-end -end testing. Um, I think we've got about 11 or 12 container images that also have to be updated all the time. I think I have a, a PR open for, um, which one? The certificate webhook has a CVE in it right now. I know that. <laughs> so um, again, reducing those container builds, reducing all of the dependencies that we need. Uh, one of the things while we were investigating, can we get rid of curl in our image? Um, if you know anybody who works for, what's the dependency? The Max database? Uh, uh, it's a GYP. Oh, GRIP. GRIP, please don't set up a cron using curl. Anyway. So just trying to reduce all of the third-party dependencies that we're using, um, again, to help reduce that attack surface. So that's a lot that we have planned. Again, Nginx, Control Plane, Data Plane, I think are the two major priorities because they will set us up from a secure perspective and it will help us with some of these other pieces. Community aspect, as I talked about, we have the dev support channel, we have the user support channel. Um, Contributor docs, we also maintain all of the documentation for the annotations um, and all that. We do need folks to help out with examples. So if you're using um, you know, the new version of the AWS cloud load balancer and you want to test it out and write up a documentation on it, um, external auth, any type of like weird corner edge case that you think would help other people, please go ahead and uh, document that and uh, work with us on getting that um, out there. Like I said, uh, community meeting and notes are in there. They will be posted. And uh, uh, we meet every two weeks to talk about CVs and a lot of these issues. And with that, I think we're good. I don't have a last slide, so I guess we can open it up for questions. We went through that a lot faster than I thought we were going to. Yeah. But we got 10 minutes to have questions. I mean, if you're here, asked. Questions, complaints, you can just come here and beat James. I don't care. No questions. We are going to implement Gateway API if you are thinking on that question. So we're doing a great job? Cool, thanks. There is one there. There, one We've question. One there. question. Don't know if we have a mic. Or... I can. Oh, we have the mics. Oh, Ricardo is going to come to you. Yeah. Uh, 
on the last slide you had talked about a control plane and data plane split can you please speak to a little bit more about it uh, once there will be two different containers for controller and the proxy mm -hmm. uh, will that have its own set of challenges uh, or uh, right now it's a little bit messy so can you just elaborate on those points everybody hear the question, I can repeat it. He just wanted to talk, uh, understand a little bit more about the control plane data plane split. And again, I will let Ricardo talk more about that. Yeah, so let me come here because I'm, I'm short. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure, like, as an example, if you have ever seen like a, a queue proxy or like other, other architectures where everyone connects to the API and then they do the programming, right? So. Qproxy, as an example, has some uh, experimental project that we've been trying doing that split to reduce the burden on the API, right? The idea is the same. So you would have some, uh, like, two or three controllers. They keep connected to, uh, to the uh, API. They do the whole of, the, the whole of business, business logic, like uh, get all of the ingresses, get, get all of the secrets, get everything. And then those control planes, they go to the data plane and say, hey, look, you have this new configuration. The data plane actually can be connected back to this control plane, right? But in fact, this control plane is not going to be Kubernetes API anymore. It's just going to be like a, a QE or like a gRPC service or something like that saying, okay, uh, there is this new uh, block of configuration. So data plane just go and configure that, right? So they are not, conf they are not connecting to Kubernetes API anymore, which is kind of what we are trying to really achieve. And because also watching uh, Kubernetes API, it, it's kind of expensive. It, it becomes expensive when you sc scale a lot. We will have just like one thing or like three con controllers watching those, uh, the, the API and all of the objects, ingress, secrets, uh, endpoints, endpoint slices, um, namespaces, and, and generating the right payload for the, uh, for the, data, for the data plane. One of the biggest things that it will help out with, right, is that Ingress itself needs access to the TLS secrets, and Nginx doesn't really. It just needs to know where they're at on disk. So being able to configure those and grab those isn't the Ingress controller piece. So again, it's about making sure who's responsible for what and making sure the access controls are there. Because right now, the Ingress controller, the image, has Nginx installed in it. We want to break those out and make sure that they're two completely separate containers. And the scaling of these two will be separate? The, they could be separate because like... they'll be separate pods, they'll be separate deployments, so it helps out with that perspective. So you'll only need maybe three controllers, and then maybe you'll need 30 Nginx, so you can scale the data plane separately, another benefit. Right now, you would need to scale both of them. Yeah, J just to be clear, we are going to start simple, right? Because uh, trying to break that way that I told you was pretty hard. Uh, we did that. It passed al almost all of the end-to-end -end tests. But uh, when you get some uh, problems like uh, uh, keep alive, uh, you know, losing connections and, and other things, uh, doing that gRPC stuff, it was kind of annoying, you know, like getting the connection established again and so on. So. Uh, we are going to start doing simple in the sense like uh, you have one pod and two containers, but uh, the container that's running in Ginex should never be able to reach the API server, right? Uh, maybe mounting the same volume or something like that. And, and based on that, we are going to start now breaking like uh, who does the uh, reconciliation, who does the, just like the configuration and the reload and so on, right? Because the, the, the huge break was going to be, uh, there is a PR there if you want to take a look like it's like 6,000 lines or something like that and a lot of changes and almost everything passing almost, if you want to test it. Yeah, okay. Anyone join, else? Join the community meeting and we can talk more about it. <laughs> yeah. Rob, you're that's, not allowed. That's a, that's a payback. <laughs> <laughs> I promise no heckling. Uh, actually though, you mentioned that you have opportunities to contribute and there are a decent number of people here. How would they get involved? Like what are, what are the ways that they can really, like are there specific concrete things they can start with or that you need, I, I know you've got a lot to handle here. Yeah, there great. is, yeah, we probably didn't do a very good job of like explaining, walking through that. Um, there are, I know there are some old examples on the documentation that don't work, that probably need upgrade, updated. So I know we remo removed off of HTTP bin, and I think some of the examples are still using HTTP bin. Little things like that. Um, again, corner edge cases for um, uses. So if you're doing something off the wall, 
um, please provide that example. We get um, questions all the time for the static deployments, because right now I think we support DigitalOcean, AWS, things like that. So if you're using a, um, a specific cloud provider and there isn't a static manifest for that, that could also be helpful. And then again, just... Um, there, there is a good example like on Helm charts, as an example. Helm, our Helm chart is yep. very complicated. <laughs> yeah. But we have some folks from uh, Giant Swarm, Giant Swarm yeah. helping us to fix, and it's kind of amazing because uh, they are using and they use in production, and they say like, "Hey, we have all of those bugs, so can we just keep fixing?" Yeah, sure, welcome. You know, so we we figured out. We've been trying. Uh, we we've been uh, figuring that there are some problems that need to be fixed, and we know that they are like a consulting that does a lot of things, and uh, they actually deploy in production. And the truth is that I don't deploy Ingress Nginx in production because I don't work anymore with uh, 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 platform engineering. So I don't know what's going on, right? And I think that's something that actually sometimes we miss as Kubernetes developers, like we don't use in our day-to-day -day things that you may have been using. So we need those feedbacks, including uh, Ingress, right? So that's, that's great. Yeah, great question. Yeah, I have a question for Jamie. So, as a Wolfie maintainer, right, um, have you had any luck in using Wolfie-based OS for Nginx Ingress? Come to my booth and we can talk about it more. <laughs> but the answer is yes. Okay. We do have an Ingress Nginx controller on Wolfie. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, thank you all for coming. Thanks, folks.